Hello and welcome back to Logic Gates. There are two Logic Gates out there known as Universal Gates. They are known as that since by properly wiring up just that one type of gate, you can mimic the functions of all the other Logic Gates out there. You are watching the Logic Gates web series on 0612 TV. The two universal gates I mentioned are actually the NAND gate and the NOR gate. Today, we'll use the NAND gate to form all six other logic gates. In the last episode, we learned that in combination of gates, one could work forwards or backwards to attain their results. The method used depends on the premise behind the combination. Since today, we want to lay out logic gates such that they fit the truth tables of other gates, we're going to be working backwards. Knowing that, Let's jump right in. Let's begin with the NOT gate. Remember that a NOT gate takes only one input, so we need to somehow populate both inputs to the NAND gate for it to work properly. Luckily, if you take a closer look at the top and bottom rows in the truth table for the NAND gate, you realize that the output is an inversion of the inputs. This allows us to construct our NOT gate, duplicate the input, and send it into both the NAND inputs. This means that both inputs must have the same value at any time, allowing us to simplify the truth table a little. Since the two input values must be the same, it's redundant to have two input columns. Simplify it further, and we're done. This is your NOT gate. That wasn't too hard, and this next one isn't either. Remember how NAND is basically an AND gate wired to a NOT gate. What if we were to wire another NOT gate in front of that? Since the output from the AND gate is inverted once here, and inverted again, you essentially get the same output back. Simply speaking, two NOT gates wired together cancel each other out. This means that we could wire a NAND gate to a NOT gate to produce an AND gate. Luckily for us, we've already derived a NOT gate based off NAND gates, so we can simply replace the NOT gate with the one we've just constructed, and there you have it, an AND gate. Next, we move on to the OR gate. Take a closer look at the NAND truth table and see if you spot similarities to the OR truth table. You see, if we were to flip the table upside down, the first thing you'll immediately notice is that the outputs now look just like that of the OR truth table. The inputs on the other hand are also kinda close, though not just right yet. You see, on an OR truth table, as long as one is present anywhere, the output is true. In this truth table we just created, the opposite happens. The output is true when zero is present anywhere. What this essentially means is that for a NAND gate to operate like an OR gate, it must receive inverted data on both its inputs. Knowing that, it's as easy as adding NOT gates to both inputs before letting the data true to the NAND gate. Now for the NOR gate. This one really doesn't need any explanation. Since NOR is not OR, we we'll simply wire a NOT gate to the end of the OR gate. Alright, this is where things start to get a little bit complicated. We have the XOR gate coming up. Since XOR is based on the OR gate, let's go ahead and attempt to work backwards on an OR gate, modifying things along the way. If you trace forwards, you realize that the truth table for the last gate looks something like this. Now, this is almost correct except for the last line. We want the output to be 0, meaning of course, that the two inputs must be 1. Let's trace further backwards and see what changes we can make to produce this result. Behind it are two NAND gates that function like NOT gates, modifying the inputs A and B accordingly. The key to this is to actually add another NAND gate into the circuit, which evaluates A NAND B and feeds that into the two NAND gates after that, with pretty interesting results. Notice how everything remains pretty much the same except the last line, which has now become two ones, producing the output we need. And there you have it, that's an XOR gate constructed with NAND gates. You know what gate is left? It's the XNOR gate, and there's no difficulty to that at all. 
since we already have an XOR gate, we simply wire a NOT gate to the end of it. Translate that in terms of NAND gates, and you have the solution. That's all there is for this episode of Logic Gates. Next time, we go through all this again, but using NOR gates. You are watching the Logic Gates web series on 0612 TV.